Monday, friends. Welcome back to Hot News. We have construction going on in this building. So if you hear any background noise, it's because they've been working on the top floor of this freaking building for the past, what, four, three months? Probably three months. It's now. been three freaking months. Why are they not done yet? I don't even know what they're doing anymore. I just hear jackhammering all day and it's not even in my head. Anyways, let's talk about today's video sponsor, which is Display. Check out Dope Metal Prints. <laughs> I got Reese. Display.com forward slash UFD Tech Official to get the best metal prints that are out on the internet right now that can be in your physical possession as well. They're not just internet based. Anyways, they're amazing decor. They mount with magnets and they plant 10 trees for every display you buy. Use coupon code UFD to save 15% and they're amazing and I love them so much. Let's go ahead and talk about today's hot news, which is actually a callback to a video we did a couple months ago talking about how the new Raspberry Pi 4 actually can have external PCI Express devices if you physically mod it as well as modify the firmware on it. You can run external GPUs with the Raspberry Pi 4. Now it looks like the greatest fear that I had for that technology has been realized because somebody has gotten multiple PCI Express devices to work off of a single Raspberry Pi 4. And if you can't see where this is going, it is the perfect mining device. Yes, my friends, you spend $35 and you get a mining computer, which then you can modify to run with multiple PCI Express slots to then put graphics cards on. It's not perfect at the moment because uh, there's apparently still some firmware level issues that need to be resolved. There's not enough bar space to map a GPU apparently right now, but Raspberry Pi engineers have said that it may be possible to do that with some custom configurations. So if you were ever dreading the return of mining, getting a mining computer for $35 as a complete package might be one of the ways to bring it back because I mean, GPU prices are down $35 for base. I mean, you have storage, you have, well, no, you'd have to get an SD card, but you have RAM, you have a CPU, you basically have everything you need. And then if you can connect multiple GPUs, it's, it's over, it's over. GPU prices are going right back up. My friends, mining craze is back. Hopefully not, but you never know. And you know what else I don't know? Why I never thought of this next article, which is because I'm not a TV engineer. That's basically the reason. Anyways, Panasonic at IFA unveiled their Megacon TV, which is basically a high contrast dual LCD TV to help replicate black levels like on an OLED. So it uses a full LCD panel and then it has a monochrome LCD panel behind that to control backlight and it can get some really deep black levels similar to OLED, but it's still LCD to help potentially drive down the price. Megacon is the name that they're using because it refers to mega contrast. I want a Megacon TV now. Okay. And then and something that you didn't need to know, but now you do. Don't know why that was the segue. Gigabyte has announced their Oris AIO liquid coolers. Uh, 240, looks like it has an OLED on the front so that it can tell you things such as the CPU temperature. You're welcome. And then Samsung has unveiled their first uh, production of their ADI RAM, in case you're not familiar. Samsung has various levels of RAM. BDI was highly regarded as some of the best overclocking RAM, and it was something that uh, uh, extreme overclockers would love to use. Uh, the ADI, however, is supposed to be more of a mainstream offering, and the first stick that they're producing is rated at 2,933 megahertz with a cast latency of 21, which isn't great, but it's supposed to be a reasonably affordable alternative. So RAM pricing might come down. It's built on Samsung's new 1Z nanometer lithography. So we'll, uh, hopefully RAM prices go down. And then another RAM update, Thermaltake has launched their tough RAM RGB DDR4. It looks like a bad knockoff of the Trident Z and kinda looks like it's an obstacle course almost. You make of it what you will. Speaking of making the things what you will, Nintendo thinks it can make their Switch controllers whatever the heck they want by making them bendable, which bothers me on so many levels. I don't know why I would want this. I think I would want uh, a better non-asymmetrical design on the freaking Joy-Cons. Like, asymmetrical's fine, but it's like offset in like, sideways as well. It's weird, I don't like the Joy-Cons at all. Pro controllers, great. Bendable Joy-Cons, why? Who needs? Nintendo, you're getting ahead of yourself, my friends. You think you got that Wii Sports craze and you're just like everybody wants to engage and interact with, no, no, okay? The haptic feedback HD rumble that you have on the Joy-Con, nobody uses it, okay? Uh-uh, 
One, two switch, sure, nobody bought that. Get out of here. Speaking of getting out of here, that's exactly what India's space program did with their lunar lander. But unfortunately, it appears that they lost communication with the lunar lander right above the moon's surface, presumably because it crashed into the surface. Uh, there's actually a really touching video out on the internet. I don't know if our editor can source it, but it's the prime minister of India consoling uh, the guy who was responsible for the space program because he's really upset that they screwed up the, the lunar landing, which it's understandable. The fact that they even got that close is remarkable getting things to the moon have you ever done that no you have it but you know who's going to SpaceX which is why I'm talking about Tesla because Elon Musk good segues all day anyways it's anticipated that they're gonna unveil their electric pickup truck this coming November not going for sale because even the Model Y even though it was unveiled last year or was that earlier this year Anyways, that's not going on sale until late next year. Uh, the pickup truck, even if it's unveiled in November, probably will not see a release until 2021 or 2022. So, cool. Pickup trucks. And then in an article that intrigued me, which is why I'm including it, not that it really matters as far as news goes, but Google has apparently said that there's 175 million tablets running the Google Play Store, which confused me because I would have assumed that there were more tablets out on the internet or out in people's hands rather. And uh, I did some digger deeping and it looks like iPads have only sold like 350 to 400 million. So like tablets, not really as popular as I thought they were. Way to suck tablets. Speaking of sucking, Nothing about this next article. There's new information on the Google Assistant for the Pixel 4, and apparently, while Google unveiled over a year ago the fact that they were able to receive and take phone calls and make booking appointments for you, with the new Google Pixel 4 update for the Android Assistant, what you're gonna get is them taking hold calls for you. So if you put on hold, the Assistant will take over at that point and then in just connect you back to the call when the, an actual human picks up. And then it's also gonna help you find tile trackers, which is those things that help you to not lose your keys. And then there was another physical Pixel 4 leak, which showed off that it does have indeed six gigabytes of RAM, as well as an eight times zoom with a new camera UI, which I hope they include some good cameras on that back heaping mess of a display camera holder. One camera was really great, freaking three that looks like it's a giant, I mean, it looks like the tile thing that I just talked about on the back of the phone, I don't like it. But speaking of another camera design I don't like, the Apple iPhone 11, apparently it's gonna have a centered Apple logo at the back in order to help with reverse wireless charging capabilities to just be a good contact point for wireless charging. It's intriguing. Speaking of intriguing, this next article isn't whatsoever. Apparently Nvidia is preparing a GTX 1660 Super. We're getting a 1650 Ti supposedly, 1660 Super, 14 gigabits per second memory, TU116 die, giant worthless amount of money to spend on this, especially since Jensen Wong, the CEO of Nvidia has said that uh, it's, it's not worthwhile to buy a GPU without ray tracing. So why would you get a GTX 1660 Super? It doesn't make any sense. You're not gonna ray trace on that. You can barely ray trace on an RTX 2070. Get out of here. But you know what got in here? Some new details on a, a driver that showed off Intel's upcoming chipsets, specifically the 400 series chipset, as well as the 495 series chipsets. This is probably going to be for their Comet Lake launch that we're expecting sometime soon. That's gonna be the 10th gen CPUs with terrible naming schemes. There you go. Something that actually intrigued me, which is why I included it in here, is that it's the Pi S2, or the PIS2, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, it's a portable PlayStation 2 that a YouTuber actually was able to design. It's PS2 portable with built-in SMB server. You can watch his video of making it right up there. The battery lasts for 90 minutes and can be charged with a standard PS2 power cable. This is actually quite intriguing. I love it a lot. I'm glad that somebody did this. I totally wouldn't use it because I, can you get a PlayStation 2 emulator for your phone? I know I can get a PS1. I'll just wait for a few years when phones can power a PS3 emulator. But speaking of PlayStation emulation, the PlayStation Classic is on sale on Amazon again. You can use our link in the video description, Amazon affiliate code, and you get it for $30 for the PlayStation Classic. That's actually a pretty decent price for something that's a mini little PlayStation. I like it. For $30, I would pick it up. For $100, which was the original selling price, I would rather never hear the name Sony again. It's a dumb price. Speaking of dumb prices, the Volocopter 
raised $55 million and expects to get a three year timeline for being a flying taxi. Yes, my friends, the Volocopter, which basically looks like a helicopter fused with the drone. And in this image also fused with a shark. I don't, I don't understand it. Anyways, uh, basically they're you're supposed to fly around in these gigantic things that look like they're never actually gonna take off or be mainstream. So I doubt that three year timeline is gonna be for mass adoption. Like bite marks on the ceiling? Like bite marks on the ceiling. And then in the last article of the day, this is something that I was worried about when I used to be uh, somebody who worked out, worked the checkout counter at various different uh, places, such as a restaurant or a pharmacy. Like I would have physical access to people's cards. I could see the 16 digit number on the front with all of their data. What would stop me from just looking at it, memorizing it and copying it down? Well, that's what happened with somebody in Japan where one of the cashier clerks used his photographic memory to steal over 1300 credit card numbers from his customers, memorizing the 16 digit number, as well as the three to four digit security code, as well as the expiration dates and the names, and then jotting it down afterwards in order to be able to use their cards. This is something that I thought about when I was doing it. So I'm just surprised that in 2019, this is the first I'm hearing of this happening uh, on a mass scale, at least 1300 customers Customers losing all their data should be way more to be honest it's such a risk like having physical access to the card or like freaking there are some places that require you to call in your card number and even then just like typing it down what's stopping them from writing it down on the side to use it later I nothing nothing this is lack of security here this is nonsense so is that drilling that's pissing me off I'm ending hot news there. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Don't forget to hit the like button. If you enjoyed it, get subscribed so that you can stay up to date on all of our tech related content. Don't forget to check out Displates at displate.com forward slash UFD tech official. Enter coupon code UFD to save 15% off for dope metal prints that make a sound when you hit them with things. I have a giant tube. I'm gonna hit this, Goku. Yay. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.